Good morning or afternoon or whenever the hell you're listening to this. Uh, and welcome to Manga Palette. I'm one of your two hosts. I am Prestitia Luna, here with my co-host. Manga Chef Isaiah. Yay! And Manga Chef Isaiah thought it'd be fun if for the month of October we did horror things. Which I feel is a bit easier for me than it is for him. If only because I consume horror media like nobody's business. And at least I like a couple. I think. Yeah, I read a shit ton of manga. I read a see a shit ton of movies. I see a shit ton of like all types of like stupid little videos. I like watching paranormal crap. I don't believe in any of it, but I think it's fun. So this was pretty easy for me. And for week one, I chose Anamorphosis no Meiji, which is a really really weird short condensed manga. Um, so I made you. Is like dark beast, beast animal thing, sorta. It's not an easy thing to translate. Um, an anamorphosis is a camera technique that refers to distorted projection when viewed through different angles. So, you know, forced perspective. Which is actually incredibly important to the narrative. So, for Anamorphosis no Meiju, it's sort of like there's a main narrative for the first couple of chapters, and then after that, it's just a whole bunch of one-shots. It's pretty fun. The rest of them are really goofy and dumb, but the first one are generally... The first one's actually kind of fun. I do have a couple of issues, though. So, Monga Chef Isaiah, do you want to tell them what happens in Anamorphosis no Meiju? Sure. So, a couple, a group of people... Uh, they enter a contest where they have to stay in like a haunted house or a mansion. It's a haunted studio, but yes. A uh, haunted studio uh, for uh, like two days or something. Mm-hmm. And they win $6,000. Ghosts. And yeah, they're said to be ghosts in there. I don't even know if it's ghosts plural. It's ghosts singular. Oh, there's a ghost. So the story is, there was this guy who was pranked. As, which, by the way, this made me think of a lot of those guys who go like, go like, oh, it's only a prank, bro. And then they have to run away from whatever they're doing because they're pissed. Except this time a man died. <laughs> so, so the idea was, they grab an actor, they knock him the fuck out. Or like, like I guess they drugged him or something. It's not very clear. I think they grabbed him while he was asleep. But the idea is... They put him in, like, a kaiju costume. Do people know what kaiju are? Or do I have to explain that? Uh, I think people have watched Godzilla. I think people have seen enough of Godzilla and, like, um, what's the name of that movie? Where they build the robots called the Jaegers. Uh... Shit, what is the name of that movie? The movie that Guillermo del Toro did. No, Pacific with his... Rim, right? Pacific Rim! Oh, and then they just straight up say kaiju the entire time. Like, ah, oh, yeah, that's a level 4 kaiju, or, like, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's enough in the zeitgeist that I don't have to explain it. But, yeah, so he's dressed in a kaiju co- costume. He's the only guy that's dressed kind of like Ultraman. Then, like, uh, So, when he's put in the costume, he's, like, on top of a miniature-scale bu- set of buildings. And then it goes, like, oh, what the fuck? What's going on? And because he's half asleep, he's tr- stumbling, and he trips, and he smashes stuff. And then the Ultraman guy goes like, Stop, foul fiend! He was like, What the fuck? Who are you? He was like, I am here to save the world from your uh, horrifying rain. And he goes like, What? What's happening? Dude, what? And he goes, You may not remember this, 
but you have been possessed by the spirit of a monster. He goes like, I remember complaining about my job at the studio, and that was when the monster took advantage of the gap in your heart and possessed you. And he's like, oh, come on, that was just bitching. That's not, like, really a thing, is it? And then he, like, hits him with a stick. And then, so, what they did was they put a bunch of powder inside of the stick, like gunpowder. So it would pop, and it would scare the shit out of him. Unfortunately, they put too much powder, so it murdered him. Yep. Inside the stick. Yep. The whole suit, like, exploded from the inside, and it fucking killed him. Like, his skin was peeling off and all kinds of shit. Because he just basically got hit first front with uh, explosives. So, um, they say that one of the guys who was on the show who, like, made the powder for the suit committed suicide. The woman who was announcing the show quit. And the director got banished to the nether realms of stupid independent crap because no one ever trusted him again because a man died. So now they bring this group of people and they go like, so we're going to summon his ghost. And when we summon his ghost, y'all have to just lame it out here. Lame it out like cross second. Lame it out like cross second. And that's pretty much it for the first story. They lame it out like cross second. The first story? Oh. Yeah, there's two parts to it. There's one following one group, and then one following the other two. I thought that was all the same story. It's all part of the one thing, yeah, but it's cutting between them. I didn't realize that. Okay. Because it's all happening at the same time. Yeah. Right. Um, it so. doesn't really... That's one issue I had. Oh, you didn't like the jump cuts? No, like... I'll talk about it when it's all. Do you want to explain okay. the whole thing where I'm going to go? So, so now you do the jump cut part. What was the other part of it? So first thing was ghosts. Mm-hmm. Second thing was. So they have like a reenactment of the town, of an actual town, and it's really like detailed. Like the only thing that's different about it is that it's really small, or like you could like walk over it, so it looks like a monster is walking on it. Well, that's a, it's the movie set. Yeah. Or the TV show set. Yeah, that's the set. So, the jump cut was, you see uh, two people actually living in the town. And, um... Are they living there? Or visiting? They're they, walking it's, around. It's not really clear. It's not really clear. They're just walking around, I think. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, they have to avoid the actual monster. And they see all these like dead bodies from the monster. Don't forget, he was uh, the, one of them is so one of the two people is the director that they talked about, the guy who got the uh, man in the costume killed, mm-hmm. and he was explaining how like there's been weird shit happening around the set where that guy died. Or like sometimes the guy will see the mo- same monster costume walking around and go like, "What's wrong with you?" He goes like, "I didn't ask to be a monster before." Like blood pours out of it. And then, like, another guy will see, uh, will be walking around, then, uh, see the monster, and then the monster will turn a corner. And when the monster turns around the corner, he's already giant, and then the man's running away from him, and then it turns out the monster's not giant, he became tiny. Yeah. Um, Along with finding the dead bodies of another monster attack. Yeah, and all the bodies look splattered, not, like, Apart. Yeah, yeah, they look like they got crushed, or like they, um, they landed from a big distance, yeah. rather than like being ripped to shreds or something. And then it jumps up to the cross tekken, yeah. And then it goes back to cross tekken. So the, the first guy <laughs> that died. Can I just say, so when we said that, it made me think like about a manga that literally cuts to a cross tekken tournament. <laughs> That's probably the thing. It's like, oh shit, no, someone's dying. Oh god. And then, meanwhile, all right, so he got the third jewel out. As <laughs> Isn't that basically Kanga Nashiro? I don't know. That's not actually cross Tekken, is it? Well, the, it's yeah, they're not blaming it out. But... but it's not cross Tekken. Anyways, so the first guy that dies, um,. He just goes to the set and sees like, oh, it's really nice and detailed. And then he uh, smokes. And then he sees a guy in the kaiju costume saying like, 
you should be the one to uh, suffer in this town. Because he uh, accidentally hit the the model and like broke it a bit. Okay, yeah, he down. tripped. Yeah. He trips, then smashes the model. And then he gets up, he's like, oh shit. And then the monster goes, you should be punished. And then it turns bigger. And then, yeah, he dies to the monster. Um. When those other people show up, right, and they find his dead body, they don't really find his dead body. They find a tiny figure, right? Yeah. Next and then to the they car. pick, and then they pick up the tiny figure. Yeah. This is where I take issue. Yeah, with this him. is my issue too. <laughs> okay, good, good. I was hoping that we had the same problem because otherwise this was going to be quite a discussion. But well, we're gonna finish this thing, right? Oh yeah, no, I mean like they, that happens a couple of times. Okay. So, like yeah. two or three times people people are like, oh there's that one girl who says she feels ghosts and she's like oh, I feel a presence and then they look up and it's like oh shit the giant monster's here oh no oh no and then someone dies again it was a coward guy he was like come on don't you guys want to hang out with me no <laughs> <laughs> fantastic he's like oh, I'm not going to be the first one to die because they didn't realize the body was there yet, but, yeah. Well, I mean, at first they thought it was a doll. Because he's like, I could just pick it up, but it's tiny. It looks very realistic. Oh, it opened its eyes. Ah, drops it. Picks it back up. It's like, ah, I guess that was just bullshit. It opens his eyes. Ah! It gets. And then he drops it and, like, splatters it. <laughs> um. And then they have the jump cut where the people see it, but that's not really important. Nope. I guess we could just skip to the end, where it's like... Well, I mean, like, there's that part where the one uh, girl goes apeshit, because she's like, I'm not gonna die here. She's like, I get it, the ghost oh, wants me to punish you! Yeah. And she stabs the private investigator in the mouth with a fork. No, the other woman. Oh, was it? No, because she stabs oh, no, the private right, investigator right. in the mouth. Yeah, you're right. And then he's on the ground, and she's like, alright, I'm gonna kill you, woman. And then, like, the ghost lady, like, slams a tree in her hair. Try and slams a tree into her head. And she just, and she, like, boom, she's dead as a tiny, tiny person again. And the other guy gets up, he's like, what the fuck was that? But, yeah. And then, uh, we cut back to director, where, uh, the giant monster comes, and it's gonna kill him. And he goes, like, okay! Ah, ah, jeez. And then his assistant who's with him goes, you know what the problem is? It wants you to admit what happened. And he was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll tell the truth. The guy didn't put too much uh, black powder in the costume. I did it. Like, I, I, he put the right amount, but then I thought, you know, he's being an asshole. He's always acting so high and mighty. So I put another, I put more black powder in them to tell him to go fuck himself. I didn't think that guy was going to die. Forgive me. And she goes like, okay. And his assistant goes, Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Because you, now that you've admitted your sins, you must be punished. That's so... Uh, why and would he fall for that? <laughs> I don't fucking know. If I was about to die from a giant monster, I wouldn't start admitting, like, oh, it was actually me. I'm yeah, if, trying to I'm, run away. If it's a <laughs> giant monster, I don't think you can win, right? Because it's a giant monster. Yeah. So instead, I would just like try to kill myself. That. Go out on my own terms. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you won't get, like, tortured. Yeah, fuck that. I don't know what the monster's gonna do. It's a monster! It's literally a fucking monster. I don't I know what it's gonna do. Fuck that. I'd rather just eat shit minute one. Ugh. But, uh, yeah. Fucking monster. And then, yeah, and then he dis Then it falls. And then it reveals that he fell off of a building. And it's like, oh, he didn't just, like, get crushed by the monster. He actually died falling off of a building. And it's like, wait, what? And they go like, all right. So, And then the, the assistant takes off the glasses and the hair. Uh, and then the uh, takes off glasses and a hat. And goes like, huh. And then you realize it's the psychic girl from the other story. And then, like, somebody else comes over her shoulder. And then um, the monster comes over her shoulder. And then the guy goes like, uh, it feels good to have the weight off my shoulders. I mean, I still got two people killed, but I'm glad knowing that it wasn't all my fault. And it's like, oh, 
is that guy who they said committed suicide. I guess he didn't commit suicide. And then the monster takes off its suit, and it's the woman who was announcing the show who also disappeared. And now she's like, yeah, okay, fine. I'm, I'm also glad that he admitted to his crimes. He's like, well, he received the punishment he deserved. And then it cuts back to all the other debts, and it shows that technically they've been falling off. So this is where the title comes in, right? Because anamorphosis is about, like, um, distorted angles and like, how you would see things at certain angles and then believe them to be different than what they are. So it's like distorted perspective, right? So what apparently has been happening, and fuck you, manga, because how would I know this, is that we're watching it from a camera view at an angle so that it seems like everything is on the same level. But actually... The monster is on a higher platform than the people on the lower platform. So it looks, through forced perspective, to be bigger than them. Sure. And that to an extent, the platform that is a small town is actually very, very high up in a building. So that way, when you look down, you would be able to see the, the rest of the city skyline. And that it looks identical to what you're already standing on, assuming that the, in fact, the entire town is miniature and that this is a lot larger than it is. Sure. So that's what we're supposed to understand, right? Yeah. So we're supposed to believe. I'm not believing it. No. Now here's my big fucking problem. That would make sense if they weren't able to pick up the bodies. Yeah. Or because... They, like, walked off. How would they know they wouldn't walk off the place? They didn't know. That was the point. Because, remember, it goes from an office building and opens up into the set. And then it just turns out that the set is, in fact, one flat plane. Yeah. What do you mean, no? Like, shouldn't they be able to see the, like, wooden stuff when it, the monster raises? Like, pushes someone off? No, it didn't push them off. They fell off. Yeah, because the platform is raising, right? No. They're two separate platforms. They're running away and then running into what they think is like just further into this into the set. But really, it's the actual skyline. Uh... So it's like, imagine if you're standing on like that, uh, that glass pane that's at the top of the Empire State Building where you can see the bottom. Right? And you keep walking thinking that, you know, it'll always be there, that there'll be a wall, but then there was no wall, so you just fall off. So how you would the monster be able to... know? Because there was a trap the entire time between the three of them. I know, but how would the monster know they would be at the exact place? They could have just walked out without the monster being there. That's my point. Oh, yeah, they could have just walked out without the monster being there, but that's why the monster only shows up when they're in there. The monster doesn't show up at any other time. The monster only shows up when they're in that room. Right? Yeah. Should yeah. they also feel like a breeze? I guess. They should. Yeah. That's one that's one issue. My bigger issue is they shouldn't be able to pick up the body. If if we're understanding that these are in fact like completely different planes, right? So like say one of them is three hundred feet up, the other one is 320 feet up and then the bottom one is like zero right you shouldn't be able to pick up the body because the body is actually 320 feet below you yeah but he was able to pick it up and then see it and then move it around and then I'm like Ugh. because the because when the other director right when the creepy director who committed the murder accident uh fucking confesses to the death it's because he had seen a couple of dead bodies, which we understand happened from the other thing about, like, ooh, fake haunting. Right? Shouldn't they be able to see the skyline, too? Well, they are seeing the sky. They're, they're seeing buildings. It's a forced perspective idea. It's like... It's like, uh, you could see a sculpture that looks like trash, but from the right angle, it says hello because of the way all the lines line up. Right? Okay. But if you're looking at it from the other angle, it just looks like any other pile of random bullshit. Oh, because you can't see the top. Exactly. So, like, he would just be seeing a tall building that looks unfinished. He wouldn't know that there were that there's like a little stage there. Oh. 
Because from his perspective, it's just an unfinished building. Because it's all open to the air. But my point remains, it's impossible to pick up the fucking body! Yeah. That doesn't make sense! Unless they already had, like, replicas. No, but they would still be able to see the actual dead body, because that's what the director found. So you're telling me that they see two tiny dead figures that are exactly the same and then happen to pick up the one that was a doll? That doesn't make sense! That's the only thing that they could do. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense! That actually doesn't <laughs> make sense! I can forgive the forced perspective thing, even though they should be able to see the bottom of the second floor. Like, I can get maybe focusing on the monster and then going, oh shit, he's bigger than it's supposed to be. But because of the way it's drawn out in the manga, it implies that there's, like, a second floor. So you should be able to see the floor and not, and, like, not picture it as the ceiling. Because you know you're not that small. If you're able to look beneath you and see, mo and see like, buildings and look above you and see a floor and then the monster, it would make sense that you could tell that there's a fucking floor there. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Unless it's, like, moved by a crane, but the way it looks like it was set up is it was actually set up at a certain angle. Because, you remember, beyond a certain point, like, when they were just explaining the part where the girl goes, like, oh, I feel a presence, right? Like, as far as they see it, they are under, um, they are under the set. Because they, what looks like the base of the other set is actually looks like the roof of the set that they're on. So for now, they don't really see anything. So they walk ahead and when they walk ahead now their perspective shifts in a way that allows them to see the base of the other one as though it were the top of the buildings in insofar that it would make the monster look bigger but if you look up at any other point you'd be able to see that it's a fucking floor yeah oh god damn it I just you can see the little floor behind it but whatever yeah yeah that's the thing it's like it assumes that you never look around until you're already it's already too late I think. Yeah, that's a third story. But even then, you shouldn't be able to pick up the body. Like that just doesn't make sense. It it like it bothers me because if you didn't have that thing going on, this could at least be kind of believable. And mind you, it didn't need to be believable. It could have literally just been ghost bullshit from minute one. You could have just stuck with the ghost thing. But no, in the end, it was like, aha! Guess what? It was all a plan. But, like, now you have to retroactively explain how all that shit is reasonable. And you forget about some of the things in the process. Meaning they don't seem reasonable anymore. You know? Yeah. It's, it's the ability to suspend your disbelief when certain rules are presented. But when those rules are then blatantly ignored, it, like, rewrites the order of events. And now doesn't really make it as fucking believable anymore. Because when we were working with ghosts, you can just explain it by going, fuck it, ghosts. Who knows what ghosts do, you know? And there's nothing you can really do about that. But, like, now that it's like, no, it was a trap, it's like, okay, well, then how did this work out? Uh, well, like this. How did this work out? Uh, maybe like this? How did this one work out? I don't fucking know. Like, that's my problem with it. It's not real enough. If it's supposed to be real, make it, make sure it fills in all the holes. And if it's not supposed to be real, well, then it doesn't fucking well, matter. Go. How would you explain the two heads of the people that are giving the money away? What do you mean? Remember when they were in the room and then the two heads came down from the uh, like the speaker part? Like, like, there's a problem we can't get out. Yeah, but that could have been props. You can make horrifyingly realistic corpses. Yeah, that's my point. It could have been another. But yeah, you're right. No, that's but like that's easier to explain. That's yeah. the old, that's way easier to explain than the not noticing the forced perspective and then the not be, and then being able to pick up the dead bodies. Right. Like you can give a, get away with some of it, but not everything. It's like great, fucking, fucking whatever. It's over. What do you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, it's done. It's done. Fuck you. To make a movie. And a movie. I don't think it's gonna do that well because it wasn't oh. that long. I <laughs> know. No. <laughs> um. But by the way, I do like this guy. The guy who wrote this manga. He's really cool. 
He's, uh, he's written a lot of interesting stuff. His name is uh, Shintaro Kago, and he's been working since the 80s. This manga is, in fact, from, like, 2008, and then it finally got collected together in one volume, like, late in 2009. But uh, he wrote this manga called Harrow Man, and this manga called A Fraction, and this um, other one that was, like, Paranoia Street. And all three of those that I read were really, really fucking good. Paranoia Street was actually a lot more like the rest of this vol- this manga. So, now that we've covered the main story of um, Anamorphosis No Made You, we can talk about the rest of the bullshit. Because as it turns out, um, six chapters does not finish a single fucking volume, I guess, if they're really short chapters. <laughs> so how did you like the rest of the manga? Uh, the one... I thought it would be like another like realistic story after that, but ah nah it just like nah shit. fuck it. It just goes ape shit. Yeah, but I did like it. So. Oh, I love it. It's so goofy and funny. Like some of them are like pretty funny, like uh, the thing about the 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 detective girl. Um, that's what I want to talk about. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, go go go. So, uh, how does how does your body create a magnetic pole? <laughs> Field, right? Field. Well, to be to to be perfectly honest with you, at all times we have a slight amount of electricity coursing through our body, but not enough to have. But things. not enough to create a field. But I think that's what the rest of the tubing and amplification bullshit is about. Shit. And to be fair, I don't even know if you're supposed to take that super se- seriously or realistic. I thought you were, but yeah. I guess not, because then it was like, look, this is how it's done. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I guess it's start from the game. The it turns out there's this uh, detective agency uh, genius who can yep. solve all the murders, and she and she gets a request saying like, my uh, what was it? My bro- was bro- brother. Oh, the brother. Is my brother got arrested for killing his wife? And I'm yeah. like, what? It's like, yeah, she was tied up in an electrical cord, and then it's just like all types of shit stuck in her head and her body. And then they go to the thing, and he goes like, so you killed her. He's like, I did it. The tools did it. And they're like, what? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, what, how does that make sense? He's like, we have an S&M fetish thing. Don't you judge me. Don't you judge me. So then like, I tied her up, and then, and then like the shit just started flying off the walls and stabbed her. I was Carpet like, I'm sense. sorry. What? Yeah, well, it's like a screwdriver and like a fucking um, a chisel and like an owl. And just a bunch of shit. Yeah. So then, yeah. Uh, so you go like, huh? What the fuck? How does that make sense? And then the detective girl's trying to come up with some bullshit. And, she, and then, like, there's a part where she beats up a guy. And then she gets it. And she goes like, ah, direct transmission from home, sensei. I understand now. I was like, I'm sorry, what? It was a bodyguard that I don't even know. That said, it was a girl's husband, the brother's, the sister's uh bodyguard. It was weird. No, it was her boyfriend. Yeah, her boyfriend. The scary guy with bodyguard. the afro. Yeah. It was her boyfriend. Yeah. She's like, I have a boyfriend. I, he's gonna do something that's cool. That's my alibi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's my alibi. <laughs> right. So then she goes. Oh, I get it now, after beating him up. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I get it. So then she has to get tied up in cords. It's like, alright, so check this out. The power was on, electricity was flowing through the cord, and we already have our own electromagnetic pulse running through our body. So then together, it made a magnetic field. Alright, now I need you to do me a favor. It's like, what? I need you to put that vibrator in me. He's like, what? It's She's like, already tied up. Trust me. She didn't have to tie herself up. But. Didn't. Didn't. But uh, anyway, I was like, all right, so this is a metal vibrator, right? Okay. So with the electricity and all the other stuff, her body became an electromagnet, and then all the fucking carpentry tools came in and were magnetically attracted to her and killed her. It's like, why would you do that? Wasn't that risky? Well, no. See, I shaved all the tips so I wouldn't get stabbed. I was like, wow. <laughs> Detective That's it. genius girl sells it again. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. 
Amazing. All right, cool. <laughs> then, uh, was it the nipple or was it the houses? Oh no! It was the, first. It was the rainy girl. Oh, uh, eh. I and then like that one was weird. That one was just weird. Yeah. It was the girl that could, whenever she like uh goes into places, it rains. Well, no, it's that she has like a small rain cloud on her at all times, and that it can't be stopped by other things. How is and... the ceiling leaking then? Oh, because the sky yeah. Cloud, okay. Yeah. And that's why I have to walk for his umbrella. Yep. Oh, okay, it's fine. I like that her boyfriend was like, I can't take this fucking rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. I love that. He's like, no, you don't understand. It's raining all the fucking time. I'm sick of this. This is bullshit. Like, alright, sure, whatever. And then after that was the cannibal baby. Oh, wait. We didn't finish it. What do you want? Right. I mean, do you want to talk about the rainy thing? No. Yeah, all right. I thought we were just fine. Okay. I want to talk baby. I want to talk about the candle baby though. I like that. Sure. That was fun. Go that on. reminds me a lot of other like pretty out there horror stories that are like, and then this happened, and it's like, I'm sorry, what? It's like, uh, you ever hear that urban legend about like, oh, this guy was following me and flashing his high beams all the time. And it was starting to get really scared because he kept following me and flashing his high beams and then stopping. And then he gets out the car and the, and like uh, and then when they get out the car, they turn around. There's a guy with a knife in the back seat. <laughs> it's like that's why they were flashing their high beams. It's like that. It's, it's literally like that. There's what a is guy. Is there a name oh, for that? No, it's just one of those urban legends you hear about all the time. Uh, I don't even know if that one has a name. Cause it's it's just one of those stories, you know, like that, or like bun like Bunny Man has a name, Cropsy has a name, but like a bunch of this other shit doesn't. Like the spider egg on the face, like that doesn't have a name, but I think people know about it. Even if it's not a real thing, it's a thing people know. So, this is based on a couple of the stupid Japanese stories about like, hey, guess what? And then that person was a cannibal. So, um, or like other people telling stories about like, oh, and then that woman was feeding him his own son. Bleh. People have been telling that kind of story for centuries. But anyway, so there's like a couple, right? But it's a guy and his student. So like, it's a guy who's like a, and I think uh, she's a high schooler, right? Yeah, because he teaches her. He te Yeah, I mean, he could still be teaching her if she was in middle school. I don't know how gross he is. Well, That's she could I have babies. Because she's in high school. Yeah. Right, not... uh, no, I don't know. I remember him saying high school is why I'm asking. I, I can't know. remember if that she's in high school or he's just a high school teacher. And then, like, she just started or whatever. I'm not sure. I remember but, yeah. the age difference was 20. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. You know, we got a 20, age, 20 year age difference. So he's living with his uh, student who really, that's fucked. But all right, whatever. So they're together, and they're dating, and they're, like, sleeping together, and then a lady comes over and knocks on the door and says, Hey, I made too much. It's like, oh, is it the lady from next door? It's like, yeah. Oh, uh, it's so cheesy. People don't really do shit like that no more. It's like, well, I mean, you know, she's nice. It's like, yeah. I mean, also, do you think she realizes we're, like, not appropriately aged? And it's like, don't you think she, maybe she thinks we're just a married couple? It's like, you think so? It's like, well, she wouldn't be thinking food over. And it's like, yeah, damn, let's do what married couples do. And then they sleep together or whatever. And then like they go to school and then like the lady brings them food again. And then like they turn out the girl's pregnant. He's like, fuck. Oh no. He's like, I kept telling you to put on a condom. He's like, come on. And then she's like, I'm not getting an abortion. He's like, You are you fucking stupid? I'll lose my job. Ah, you god have damn no money. It. Yeah, they're broke. I don't even understand how they're living together. Is it that, like, she's generally with her family and then every once in a while just comes over and stays over and says that she's in a friend's house or something? Doesn't I don't know. Matter. Just... Doesn't really <laughs> matter. Because this is what's important. Um, she's super obviously knocked up past a certain point. And she's like, hey, so, like, we gonna get married or what? And he's like, what? I don't got money for that shit. And she's like, God, you're stupid. And then, like, he's trying to sleep with her again. And then, like, this time somebody knocks on the door and it's not the lady. He's like, uh, hey, what's up? And it's like, we're the cops. We'd like to ask you some questions. And he was like, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, 
And it's like, no, 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 it's about your neighbor. Oh, what happened? Like, you didn't see the news? <laughs> She's a killer. She's been abducting and chil- children. I'm sorry, what? Like, yeah, he searched her room, and she had large amounts of children's f- uh, people's flesh in the fridge. He's been cooking and eating them. Cooking? Uh, and then the girl has a miscarriage. And then it cuts to a different couple. And then it opens the door, and it's the high school girl. And he's like, oh, hey, it's you. He's like, yeah, we made too much food. If you would like, please have some. It's like, was it the neighbor? Yeah, I don't really get that. And it cuts back to the girl, and she's just having live birth in her in her room, I guess. And then she's just, like, fucking cutting apart the recently newborn baby. And then he's like, yeah, I'll make it with okra this time. And then the guy's like, yeah, we really do make too much. That was Whatever. fucking wild. Whatever. I love that. I love that so much. That was great. Oh, God. I love that kind of shit. Where it's like, and then they became the monster. It's like, oh, okay. Well, here's where we're going. Not gonna try All to right. Sense that, but okay. uh, no, it's easy. They became like horribly emotionally broken as a result of what happened. No, and now why? She could just give live birth all the time. I don't think it's all the time. It seems think... like if they keep making soup that frequently. I think that every time they have a child, that's what happens. I don't know. It looked like it just came out. Yeah, yeah, but that could have just been because she's used to having kids at this point. Anyway, um, so yeah, where are we at? Where do you want to go after that? Because then there's the people who never leave their house, and they become the weird blobs. And there's the people with not stands. And there's the one I wanted to talk about, about um, being haunted in your past life. We can go to the past life. <laughs> yeah! Cool. So, it's like... Uh, a girl and her sister. Sister's being super weird. I can't tell if her mother was in the house because it looks to just be her dad and her and her sister. But anyway, um, so her, she, her sister's acting weird. She's like scarfing shit a lot, and seems to be eating. More like uh, she's like, didn't you used to hate me? She's like scarfing all the meat. She's like, I don't know. I like it better now. And she finds like scales around, and then she goes and follows her sister, and her sister's like eating rats, and she's like, "What the fuck?" And then she turns like a snake person, and like a, a, a what do you call it? An exorcist comes over it and goes like, "Ah, oh, well, she got possessed by a snake." And it's like, "What?" Uh, well, in her past life, she was a hunter, so she killed a shit ton of snakes, and now the snakes are mad, and they're getting their revenge by possessing her with a snake spirit. And it's like, "Well, I can exorcise it." But that really would only be a temporary answer. I can do this instead. I can go to where she was in a past life and then tell her to stop. So then, like, his ghost goes back in time to see this, like, old dude in you know, like a big beard and goes, like, hey, you better stop hunting snakes or you're going to get cursed by snakes. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, I'm the god of the mountain. You don't leave those snakes, uh, snakes alone. After a week, you'll die in horrible pain. It's like, I get it. Ah. And then it cuts back to the little girl. And she's fine now. And it's like, yep. Since she never committed the crime against the snakes, the curse is God. He's like, wait, did you change history? He's like, yeah. Anyway, uh, that'll be 10 million. And she's like, what? Fuck you. I don't have that kind of money. He's like, well, I'll run it back then. And she turns into a snake again. <laughs> and then the girl goes, all right, look, I can't help. So then she like undresses and lays against the bed and goes like, I'll pay you like this. He's like, nah, he came with a dog. And then he's like, yeah, the dog, is, the dog is my lover. And she's like, you fucking, what is wrong with you? And she's like, all right, I got an idea. Since we can't do this, uh, can I convince you to do business? And he's like, what do you mean? So they go and they find the swimmer girl. She's like, I can make you swim faster. He's like, what? That sounds like bullshit. And she goes to the guy. He goes like, all right, hey, uh, you know what to do. He goes back in time to the girl's past life, which is just some dude walking around with a fish. And goes like, overhunt fish. Hardcore! I'm the god of death, I'll kill you! And I was like, ah! <laughs> he goes to hunt fish. I turns back and the girl's like a fish monster now. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, see? And the girl goes like, wow, I can swim so fast! He's like, well, she's received the curse of fish now. It's like, yeah, we're gonna make money, we can keep doing this. And like, make one guy overhunt kangaroos so they can do crazy jumps, make another guy overhunt cheetahs. Then, like, one person overhunts sumo wrestlers. I think my personal favorite is overhunting mangaka. 
because there's like the so like there's a thing where like mangaka tend to like doodle versions of themselves in like editors columns right like akio otsuka and stuff like that like really old dudes so it shows the little doodles getting shot in the chest by like shotguns <laughs> and i cuts the guy going i can draw i can draw <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then it shows the and then it shows the girls like also I asked them to hunt girls with big breasts so now I have big chests it's like I'm sorry what how does that make sense you can be cursed all right whatever fuck it don't care point is that guy gets his brains blown out and then there's a I guy I think the guy say we liked them better when they were small <laughs> oh no it's the dad uh. it's her dad I wanted her to stay flat which I'm assuming is just about drawing attention but hey I don't really care. Because right after that, the spiritualist gets his brains blown out. So then, like, that, he goes, like, ah, oh, this guy's going, like, I'm killing exorcists. And then it shows a girl in a future, and then it shows a robot man, and then, which I think is the same guy. Like, he survived. But anyway. Or maybe he hacks the hunt robots. Go on. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I thought. So, so she goes, all right, now since I've overhunted uh, exorcists in my past life, I am now psychic, and he goes, that'll be a hundred million. And I was like, fucking, what was that? What was any of that? The part where he's just fucking the dog for a panel, and I was like, what is this? This is dog crazy. Oh, yeah, by the weird. way, this manga is, like, oh, that's really weird. detailed. Like, the, guy's, the guy's a guru, like, mangaka. Everybody knows that about him. It's like, all oh, if it's, like, de- if it's, like, bloody, it's really gross. And if it's, like, uh... The sex isn't really detailed, but like the 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 horrifying body morphing and like corpses and like mangled body parts are super detailed. No reason at all. Nah, I mean like, that's just the style. Like in the house, they have hair on like each one of the bodies. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it though. Is this weird? All right, now you now what? There's the girl who was haunted by a uh, fucking. The girl who was haunted by uh, a sumo wrestler. There's the girl who was an act. Uh, the girl who got super killed because she thought she was gonna get turned into a robot. And then there's my personal favorite from the entire thing, the nipple thing. Let's just talk about the nipple thing. That'll be it. Okay, cool. Now oh, wait, I also want to talk about the robot girl. So let's do that first then, because the nipple thing I feel is the most mutually enjoyable between both of us. The robot girl. Yeah, it's the last, last thing. Uh, I think you missed the organ one, but yeah. What organ one? Where the everyone puts, loses things and it ends up in her stomach. Oh, yeah. But You're I, right. I don't. Everything I'm avoiding is super weird. I'm just like. Uh, it's like really gross. It's just. Uh, you're right. I forgot about that. I kept thinking about the people who have stands slash not stands. Because like the sumo wrestler both... just pushes him. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I always wanted to get a push. That would yeah. be 10 million. <laughs> anyway, um, so the the girl who thinks she's a robot is like, uh, so this is girl in her bed. And her mother comes over. She's like, Mom, I can't remember why I'm in here. It's like, I don't feel all that bad. She's like, you've been experiencing some sickness. And she's like, okay. And then her mother, like, gives her a box, like, eight boxes of juice. And she goes, like, Mom, I want to eat. She's like, you need fluids. You're not okay. She's like, ah, fine. And then, like, she starts doing that thing where she thinks that maybe something's up. It's like, maybe that's not my mom. Maybe that's someone else. And she's, like, strapped to her bed. And it's like, you you still can't move, right? So you need to be, like, strapped down. It's like, then why are those footsteps coming? Are you actually my mother? Are you a robot? Is that what happened? She's like, what? No. She's like, you're going to turn me into a robot, aren't you? It's like, No. I was like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. And then the girl, and then like the doctor comes in, and the doctor starts stripping her to do an exam, which he seems really forceful about it. Because the girl is like freaking out. And she's like, you're going to make me into a robot, aren't you? I'll kill you. And she kicks him in the chest, and he flies into the ceiling. And then like, ah, uh, there's a girl who's across the hall, I guess. Or like, as if to say across the street, or, like next door. And the girl's like writing on a sign. And she's like, whoa. I have already been turned into a robot, and the girl writes a sign that says, I want to play with you. She's like, and then she grabs another piece of a little sketchbook and writes the same thing. It's like, yeah, but I'm stuck on the bed. I think I got turned into a robot. And the girl goes like, well, that's fine. Your heart is still your own. Then you're fine. Let's escape before they turn our brains. 
I'm going over there. She's like, how? I'm like tied up and the window's locked. She's like, there's a switch under the window on the right side. Okay, fine. So she hits the switch as like her mom is at the door and says, stop. And then you just watch her like eyes and tongues explode out of her skull as it's, and then it turns out she's in a space station. So the, the space, so the, got him. yeah, <laughs> no, the girl writes retard. <laughs> like it's very meaner. I just got him. <laughs> like, dumb bitch. Ha! <laughs> it was basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is she That's supposed like... to know that? Like, eh. My question is, why did the girl not know she was on a space station? Like, she was asleep for a long time, but how did they take her into space? I guess, I guess with this fancy space station, they're all just able to do that. But I don't know. It's still weird. It's the future. It's the future, presumably, yeah. So that's why I like that, because then she goes like, oh, I'll be free, and then fucking dead. Okay, Don't now push. let's talk about the nipple. Okay. All of these have names. They're all like one word names, but I don't really give enough of a shit to remember all of them. I won't remember what they were. So you want to take this one? Uh, I'll start it and you can finish it. Okay. So... A girl wakes up, and then she uh, feels her chest, and it has a mouth on it. Yep. And uh, she's like, I don't know how the hook did I get this. So uh, she goes to somebody, I forgot who. She goes to the hospital. The hospital. And the like, doctor says it. And the doctor's like, did you, uh, what happened to you last night? Did someone... Suck on your nipple? She's like, no. no. No, 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 It's different. What he says is, oh, no, this happens all the time. Whenever, like, like uh, your body is stretched to something for too long, like, it just switches. So sometimes when a mother is nursing, the baby's mouth and the mother's nipple switches. Sometimes when guys bowl, their hands, uh, their fingers switch with the holes in the bowling ball. Sometimes train straps switch with hands, doorknobs switch with hands, keyboard switch with fingers. Like, the idea is this just happens all the time. You're just supposed to say okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So then she goes. So then he goes like, "Hey, did you check your baby's mouth?" She's like, "I don't even have a baby. What? I'm not married." And he goes like, "Yeah, that doesn't look like a baby's mouth anyway." And then uh, she he asks, "Did you go to uh, what happened to you last night?" And she's like, "Did you are you having sex with someone? Who was your boyfriend?" She's like, "I never had a boyfriend or anything." But then she's like, "I actually got drunk," and uh. I probably blacked out the party. It's probably some guy at work. So then she school. goes to work to find the guy. School. She's in school. She's in school? She's a high schooler. Didn't she go to like a faculty table? No. She went to the the stupid Olbon festival that the school has. Uh. And then someone brought alcohol. Uh. Which is not that weird when you think about it. I'm at the next panel. Looks like she went to a table to find. She went. To, she went to school. But it was like one table. Nah, she went to her classroom, and there was like four desks pushed together. Oh, that's weird. All right. All right. Um. So she goes to school, and she's like, "I'm trying to find a guy who uh sucked my nipple." Sucked with my nipple. <laughs> Something like that. And then yeah. she's a guy of uh. The coffee mask, I forgot what it's called. Uh, it's uh, the medical mask? The medical breathing mask. mask? Oh, yeah. And then she's like, it was you, wasn't it? And then she takes off the breathing mask and sees... Uh, what was it? There is a nipple. Oh, yeah, the there is a nipple. But it's not the same nipple. No, no, no. He has this <laughs> little sign because, you know, his mouth is all occupied. I guess you could take your mirror, cause yeah. Okay, cool. So he has a little sign, and he goes like, "Wrong! This is my mom's nipple." She was like, "Are you fucking with me?" He's like, "No, actually, my mother and I have been in an incestuous relationship for years." Don't you judge me? And then she looks at it, and goes like, "Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, this nipple is different. It's very dark and long and thin." Hmm. And she sees another guy with a breathing mask and takes it off, and then there's a dick. And I was like, "What the fuck is that?" Wait, his mouth got switched with a dick. 
So then that means, oh, and then like his girlfriend goes like, what the fuck? And then like, it's like, who, who was it? And then the teacher comes in and then like, while the kids like panicking, like um, the noise comes from the teacher's crotch. He's like, wait, are you serious? And then the, the sound bubble goes like, I'm sorry. I was just, what? I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> So then she realizes, ah, the mouth is connected to the body. So she, like, picks up a bunch of weird shit, like mustard and wasabi, and, like, puts it on the spoon and then puts it on the mouth that's on her, that's where her nipple used to be. And one of her classmates freaked the fuck out. And he's like, ah! And she's like, wait, but you have a mouth. What's happening? It's like, right. So last night, everybody got drunk, and it turned into a weird orgy. It's like, okay. Right. So then I did the thing, and then your nipple in my mouth switched, right? It's like, yeah. Right, and then this guy was like, ha ha, his mouth looks like a nipple. Let me suck it. And then his switched. And then, a, and then a cat switched with him. And now no one knows where that cat is. Or the I was nipple like, I'm sorry. Exactly. Well, yeah, because the cat would have had it. Yeah. And then he goes like, what the fuck? And he goes like, well, it's been 40 years since then. And now I'm the first female prime minister. <laughs> Because, oh yeah, she can't get a boyfriend now. Oh yeah. well, no, now her life is only dedicated to what she believes in. Which I guess is politics? I don't know. She wants justice. Makes she wants justice. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, she goes like, now it's been 40 years. And I'm the first female prime minister. And then she's like walking around and goes like, well, I guess I have to start it now. Nuclear war cannot be averted. And then the guy comes over with like a little case and goes, Mrs. Prime Minister. Make your decision. She's like, well, I guess it's time. He undoes the thing, and then her nipple's there, where the missile launch button should be. <laughs> and then she goes like, so it was here. Which makes me wonder, where the fuck is the missile button? Does that mean at any given moment the world could have sank into nuclear apocalypse? Oh, boy. Oh, that's, that's scary. Not... But you know what? Fuck you. We're done. That's it. <laughs> Manga over. You dick. That oh, guy man. literally did. <laughs> oh yeah, that one guy did. Which like that's very inappropriate. <laughs> the whole manga's inappropriate. Yeah, the guy fucking the dog was a bit much, yeah. But like the snake monster's just the snake monster. I don't really care about the snake monster. But she also was gonna sell oh, herself for, to the guy totally. So. Yeah, and then he started fucking the dog. So like, no, 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 no. I, I'm good with my dog. Oh, fantastic. Right. So um, that's pretty much it, honestly. Uh, okay. So food. Oh boy. This. This. I <laughs> want it. Want it to be something that's bizarre and upsetting. So, I was thinking of that sheep's blood soup that they make in Mongolia. I don't know what that is. It's literally that. It's a soup, but the broth is made of, um, fucking sheep's blood. And then they, like, have eyeballs in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, the broth is made from the soup. Um, but I like the manga. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's so weird and awful. To say that, like, um, blood food is awful by default isn't necessarily true, because I, like, I, I eat, um, I eat, what's it called? Oh, God, what's the name of the thing? I really like it. I just can't remember what it's called, but it's literally made from just blood. <laughs> like, no, no, it's a name, it's the name of a thing. Oh, my God. Um... What is it? Fuck. Fuck me. Uh, it's like something dull food, but it's like they basically deep fry blood pudding. It's it's like a it's like a thing that you they do in like China, and it's like on a stick, and I and I love it. And like uh, and like uh, fucking there's like. Uh, the Thailand thing, which is like wheat noodles and like duck, and then like blood is like curdled and then put inside of it with like chilies. 
There's good usages for blood. Doesn't mean it's not weird. But the thing you described, I figure it wouldn't taste good with the eyes. So. I mean, you say that, but like I've known many people who eat like fish eyes and they taste delicious, apparently. I don't want to do it, but apparently they taste good. Hey, right, I'll take your word for it. Um, alright, well then what do you want to do then? Because I feel like with how weird a nauseating it can be at times, that works. Like, you want to make it something that's like weird and nauseating but still tasty? Like, I don't know. Well, did you ever have, uh, like, mud pie? Okay, you said this before. I remember this. Um, when, what, when we were talking about watamote. The thing about that is it's sweet. Yeah, fine. Fine. And there's I can't nothing even... sweet. <laughs> There's nothing manga. sweet about this weird ass manga. It's like I don't know. So it has to be grotesque, but taste. I mean, good. how do you feel about this manga? Could it be risotto? Huh? Oh, risotto. Uh, I don't know. Risotto had a lot of different things going on. I feel like this has the one gimmick. We're just talking about the first one, right? Or uh, no, so the whole volume. Because all of it pretty it much... had a lot of different stuff. things going on. I feel like it has just kind of the one gimmick of gross stuff. Like different kinds of gross stuff, but it's all just gross stuff. And slight mystery. So. Yeah, but that, but like the first one had mystery, the second one had mystery. Like, nah, I don't know if all of them had it. Alright, so if you want to just talk about the main thing, then, um, yeah. That's a lot easier because it's not super gross. It's just weird. At which point, I would like to propose Anticucho. What's that? Well, this is this thing they make in Peru that I've eaten recently. So it's really, really cool. So check it. It's just kind of meat on a skewer, right? But it's sautéed in a really interesting sauce. And guess what kind of, uh, guess what cut of meat it is? Cheap? Something gross? I nope. Know. Sort of. It's weird. It's cow heart. Oh. Yeah, you grab that's the weird. heart, you chop it into little chunks, stick it on a stick, and then you fucking fry them up. And then sometimes they'll put bread or like boiled potatoes on the side of it. It's mean, It's like marinated with like cumin and garlic and stuff, and it tastes fucking amazing. But like, people who don't know, like look at it and go like, this is great. And then I go like, yeah, that's the heart of the cow. It's like, oh. <laughs> I must feed on its heart. So, like, yeah, it that's kind of weird. It makes me strong. I can feel its gentleness permeating my being. I have all the strength of an ox. Yeah. But, yeah, so how about that? It's that kind of work. Weird, But it tastes really good, and it's not sweet. And when you get down to what it is, it's, ugh, it's a little weird. And it's sort of mysterious because you don't know what it is at first. Uh huh. When we figure it out, it's, it's like, oh, like really? It just looks like meat on a stick. So you would like take a bite, and it's delicious. And then depending on who you are, you're like, ugh, it's a heart versus me. I found that it was a heart, and I was like, oh, it still tastes good. I don't give a shit. And that could be like the ending's like, oh, it's the perspective thing. But okay. what about yeah, the yeah. doll? What, uh, what about okay. the other Eh, uh, whatever. I still like it. Yeah, exactly. I still like it. Yeah, this works. All right, Anticucho. Damn. Oh, oh my God. I feel like we spent most of our time talking about bullshit. Like this took like what five minutes for once? Oh boy. Oh, wowzers. All right. Um, so considering with the spooky theme, it's your turn to pick. Do you got any idea what you want to pick yet? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. It is Speed Grapher. Oh God, we're gonna go over Speed Grapher. Yeah. I the show, right? Yeah. That's like twenty four episodes. I think so. Yeah, because it's an older one. Older shows always used to do that. Remember, remember how um fucking uh what was the name of that show? The one that I ah uh, shit, I'm having trouble remembering its name now. But I, like I really like ah Nagasada Te Ranto. Yeah, that's it. It's like this harem manga that's like from the mid two thousands. And like when the show like the manga still not. Well, the manga's done, I think. I don't really know. I, I could they swear... They ended up at a weird place. 
I mean, like, it's not that it ended up on a weird. Di- no, it's not done. I'm right. It's not done. It's just, it's just going on for forever. But like the show, right? Like the show was like, okay, we're starting, and then like it lasted for twenty four episodes, twenty six episodes, which is weird for a show like this. Oh, you know what? I I got this to say about Nagasada Te Aranto. Fucking Hiroshimono was on it, so you know it was good. But yeah, so like all older shows always used to have more episodes. I only think they started doing it like in the tens or like two thousand nine, where they started going, maybe we shouldn't spend so much money on shows that we're not sure about yet. Which is fair. I get that. It's a it's a business. What are you gonna do? But speed grapher, huh? Yep. Girls on film. Do, 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 do. Girls on film. Ah. Uh, you remember when our friend just brought that up apropos of nothing? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Chris. Yeah, it was Chris. We're just, like talking about something and then he goes like Speed Grapher was weird and I'm like, What? <laughs> We're gonna talk about speed grapher? And he's like, is it am I the only one who does that? He's like, yeah, sorta. We're always talking and it leads to something. We were we wouldn't say anything. You just said speed grapher's weird. And you know what? You're right. What with the dentist and then that guy who's like blind and then the other guy. And then his the main guy's ability of like fucking camera things to begin with. Oh boy. Oh speed grapher. Get half your speed grapher. Get hyped for Speed Grapher. Uh, well, Speed Grapher was a show first, right? I have no idea. I think it was a show first, because then the manga came out after the fact. It was one of those shows. Uh. And then after that, they're like, you know what? This really blew up. Let's make a fucking light novel. Amazing. Amazing. I love you, Speed Grapher. I love that Speed Grapher is one of the few shows that has opening songs that aren't like by a Japanese band. Speed Grapher shows fucking um, Girls on Film by Duran Duran. So, get hype for Duran Duran. <laughs> Goodbye. I mean, if you're listening, you know, you get it. Yeah, you guys get it. Bye-bye.